Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. A very happy Friday to all of you. So first thing today, it looks like the Model S Plaid set a new, potentially world record in the production car version for the quarter mile race. And as you can see, the article says closing in on an eight second quarter mile, that would just mean breaking the nine second mark. So. 8.99 would technically be an eight second quarter mile. So we're not talking about eight seconds flat here. That would be otherworldly for a production vehicle. But here is the video. And this one is going to go for the world record. Gonna take his time. Make sure he gets the throttle right. Here we go. So not too bad for a family sedan. So Christopher tweeted at Elon here basically saying that unions only really exist because people were treated poorly in the past. Tesla doesn't need to have a union because they treat people well. Elon chimed in and said, yep, the reality is the total opposite of what the detractors say. The biggest challenge is recruiting enough people to build cars. The Bay Area essentially has negative unemployment, so people at our factory have several other job offers. If they weren't treated well, they would leave immediately. And look, working for Elon Musk is definitely not for everybody. You're of course going to have stories of people that aren't happy working at Tesla or they have a bad experience. No matter where you work, anywhere that employs that number of people, you're going to have some issues here and there. But overall, generally speaking, to be able to work for a company who is quite literally changing the world and revolutionizing the auto industry, working toward a goal that they can believe in, it's worth something and you can't always put a dollar figure on it. But this lack of a union for Tesla we learned yesterday is probably the reason they were not invited to the White House event. But Elon is clearly a little perturbed about not being invited. He has commented on multiple different tweets with regard to the situation. James said maybe if Elon moved Tesla manufacturing to Mexico like Ford did, the Mach-E, they'd have a seat at the table. Apparently, good paying American jobs, making 100% EVs, isn't enough to be shown as an example of how other manufacturers should behave. Elon said, irony indeed. And look, in the grand scheme of things, Tesla not being at this event really isn't that big of a deal. But when Elon tweets about the same topic multiple times, we know it's definitely on his mind and this one isn't sitting well with him to some degree. But he's still keeping a good sense of humor about it. This was a pretty funny tweet. As you can see, the picture that somebody made and Elon thought it was funny as well. And I like this video that Alex shared, so I'm going to share it with you. Starting with Plaid, Tesla pioneered in-house a direct wound manufacturing system that delivers next level performance performance and efficiency. Highly specialized companies agree that carbon sleeved rotors are the future, but they still can't keep up with Tesla's pace of innovation. Before I show you the clip, Elon said Tesla automation built a specialized machine to wrap the rotor with carbon fiber at precise tension. If too low, it would come loose at lower temperatures due to CTE differences. If too high, it would snap at high temperatures and RPM. And CTE is just coefficient of thermal expansion. And Yvonne said, Elon, with the advancement of AI in such a large fleet collecting data, will Tesla ever overtake Waze by auto collecting data such as construction zones or potholes in bad roads and automatically route away from those roads via self-driving without the owner even knowing? To which Elon said, probably. So of course, no guarantees or promises here, but I think this is a good reminder of the huge potential that Tesla has to gather all of this data with their huge fleet. Obviously Tesla has the most data and this should be the trend continuing for some time as they continue to sell more and more cars with the cameras and 
you know, all of their in-house supercomputers and everything that they're using, but to take all of that and to be able to maybe have better, more real-time maps like Waze does, being able to show you where cops are. Of course, that's kind of crowdsourced where the user can, you know, say, hey, I saw a cop here. And then that's one of the main benefits of Waze. And one would think that Tesla would have the ability to do something similar and then pair that community aspect, the community input with the cameras and that, that data being separate. So pairing those two together could give the most accurate maps and ultimately it would just make the driving and travel experience that much more enjoyable. So we got an update on the factory where Tesla will be getting its new steel for the Cybertruck. So I did a full deep dive on this project in the factory. It is linked above if you want to check it out. But as you can see this 1.7 billion dollar factory is coming to form and there is some new video that I'll show you guys. So Steel Dynamics is the company, the supplier for the steel for the Cybertruck. So this factory was initially going to start production in the fall of this year and it's about 167 miles away from Giga Texas. And of course this steel is different, right? It's going to have some unique touches that are special for the Cybertruck and then Tesla will actually redo the steel that they get from the Sinton plant to keep certain aspects of what they are doing, what I called the Tesla secret weapon. They're going to keep that kind of a secret rather than letting Sinton, that plant, do everything. They're gonna actually change some things after the fact. And so here is some footage from the factory. And as mentioned, if you want to learn more about this factory and more about Tesla's secret sauce when it comes to the steel and what they're doing, take a look at that deep dive I did. It is absolutely still very relevant. In the last item for today, Tesla buyers are asking for better communications over messy Model S deliveries. And no, this is not just Tesla detractors. This is actual people in the Tesla community that are active on the forums, basically asking for better communication from Tesla because they're buying an 80 to a $140,000 car all they're asking is for clear communication on their deliveries. So here's what's been happening. Basically some buyers are getting VIN numbers for the new car, which allows you to get insurance and financing, but then Tesla has removed the VIN number from them and they're kind of getting stuck. Financing is expiring and it's causing some issues. And as mentioned, they're titling it a letter of support to Tesla. So look, it's not like they're out to get Tesla. They're actually out to support them. They're just, you know, helping them with how they can improve. And it's pretty simple. We feel that the problem lies in communication. Now, if you want to read more, I'll link the article below, and then you can actually find the letter itself if you want to read it. But as mentioned, applying for credit, having credit pulled multiple times, only to having the loan offer expire, selling or making commitments with their current vehicles, all of this is of course being disrupted with the 
bins being given and then pulled back, delivery dates being given and then changed. It's definitely a frustrating experience, once again, especially for a luxury vehicle. And this group is saying they're not asking for anything other than communication. We feel as a group, the experience we receive before taking delivery should match the feeling of joy and delight that we experience after taking delivery. And this lack of communication for Tesla is not something new. It's been going on for years. And at some point when the early adopter phase is over, you can definitely argue when that is, and they enter the mainstream market, those people aren't going to be as accepting of Tesla not having the communication that they would expect for a higher end car because the experience of buying a car, yes, Tesla makes it much easier, especially when you know you compare it to the traditional dealership model. But at the same time, buying a car is a big deal for a lot of people. You know, it's something they look forward to. They research for months, if not years. It's one of the biggest purchases they will ever make. And all they're really asking for is clear communication. You know, not even that they need to receive it faster, just be clear and consistent in your communication and the timelines. But that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome and safe weekend and a major thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.